Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. So I thought I would uh, talk about this uh, Colt Marlin Spike knife I've got. And uh, the reason uh, it came up is because of uh, another Marlin Spike knife I got that uh, bears a striking resemblance to this. And, uh, and while I know Colt brand is not around anymore, you can actually still get this knife, not from Colt, but from another uh, brand. But it's really just the same knife. Uh, all they did was change the uh, brand. At one time, Colt was a Smoky Mountain Knife Works house brand. And uh, this knife was a knife that uh, SMKW put out in the uh, Colt lineup. But now, before I talk about this knife, let me talk to you about a knife I mentioned a little while ago that bears a striking resemblance to this one. And that is the uh, Smith & Wesson uh, Marlin Spike knife. So I mentioned this uh, Marlin Spike by Smith & Wesson in a Knife Chats Live recently. And uh, I pointed out uh, the flaws on this. Actually, I did a video on this uh, about four or five years ago and uh, really lambasted it because uh, um, it, it's just got a few things in it that are an epic fail. Uh, one thing is just how thin it is. It's a very thin knife, uh, and it's not the most comfortable knife to hold for a long period of time. And if you're, like, cutting linoleum or cutting carpeting or something with it, um, uh, at first it seems like it's really good. Um, I've cut quite a bit of carpeting uh, in my life, uh, and <laughs> it's not a job that I... Uh, uh, do for a living or anything either. It's just I've managed to cut a lot of carpeting for one reason or another. In any case, um, the shape of the hook on there is supposed to be really good for cutting linoleum, carpeting, stuff like that. Uh, but I find it a little bit too aggressive and quite often the hook kind of gets snagged on things and it, it, it kind of annoys me. Maybe I'm just not using it correctly. Um, but seriously, I've cut quite a bit of carpeting. Um, and really, um, if you're testing a hawkbill blade, um, that's really a good way to do it. If you're not cutting rope, if you're not out pruning and stuff like that, try cutting carpet with it. If you can cut carpet with it, it's going to be a good hawkbill. Uh, in any case, when you get it open and you're using it, uh, the grip here is kind of thin and uh, it, it kind of wears on you after a while. Uh, not to mention the liner lock uh, it gets in the way of your index finger. I guess you can slip it all the way up there, but usually I'm not doing that. I'm usually grabbing like so and slicing through, and uh, it, you get nice lines from uh, the thin metal here, and uh, it just wears on you. Um, the other problem with it was really, you know, this is a marlin spike knife. You get a marlin spike knife because you want to use the marlin spike, uh, and... So you got the spike here and pretty sharp, not really bad at all, uh, but it's, it's supposed to lock and you lock it with the device here uh, and then it's locked. But now this is in your way and you've got the, the large hawkbill blade just jamming right into your hand while you're trying to hold all of this. And it is about the most uncomfortable thing in the world um, when trying to use the spike. And one of the reasons you have the spike on the knife is to use it. I mean, you're using it for for uh, working knots and everything else. And so basically, I found myself that about the only way to comfortably use this is to unlock it, get this all out of the way, and then I'm like doing this with it. And most of my hand is on the spike. It's not a, you know, I... So it's, I guess it isn't too bad, but you still have that digging into your hand, and it's just annoying. It's not at all comfortable. Um, and so I just put the knife down as an epic fail. Um, not the world's uh, most comfortable for cutting carpeting, and definitely not the most comfortable knife for using a marlin spike. And so that was my original view of it. And uh, here it is many years later. I've got it in my hand again. And I realize why uh, I have basically left this knife on the sidelines and let it collect dust. Because uh, it's 
just not a comfortable knife to, uh, to hold or use. And, you know, that's the thing. If the knife is not comfortable to use, if, if you, when, when you pick it up and you think, oh man, this is going to hurt my hand after about a minute or two of using it, it's not the knife you're going to be grabbing. So looks cool, but, um, pretty much worthless. Uh, and that brings us to, uh, the Colt knife. Now the Colt is number CT525. Uh, like I said, it's out of production. These were made back when uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works owned the uh, Colt trademark or were licensed to use the Colt trademark. They didn't own anything. Uh, they were just licensed to use the Colt trademark and they provided a, a series of knives for Colt. Uh, most of the knives were made in China or Pakistan. They also did some collaborations with Case and those were known as Case Colt knives or Colt Case knives, something like that. And they had both the Case tank stamp on it and the Colt tank stamp. Um, uh, I do not have any Case Colt knives. I'm pretty sure they're uh, nice little collector's items now, but I do have a few of the old Colt knives. And uh, well, at one time I had a, uh, a real hankering for just about anything Marlin Spike, so I picked up this one. And uh, even before I picked it up, I looked at it and go, man, that very much looks like the, uh, the Smith & Wesson Marlin Spike knife. And you can see it there underneath the, uh, under the uh, little wavy line thing here, um, which is uh, actually black G10 that has been uh, glued over the uh, stainless steel slab sides. You can still see you have the liner lock going on there, the Marlin Spike on the back, almost the exact same profile and everything else. Uh, very close to what you saw in the, uh, in the, uh, Smith & Wesson Marlin Spike, except it has a different blade on it, and that really makes all the difference. And so what you have here is, uh, instead of that big uh, uh, hawkbill blade, what Colt did is they swapped that out for a more traditional or semi-traditional sheep foot blade. And uh, for the uh, nail neck, they actually passed the hole all the way through there, and they've got some... Uh, jimping on the inside there or some, or some grooves in there so you can get a good purchase with your hand to open it. It is very tight. Notice it still has the half stop. I uh, don't know if I pointed that out, but the uh, Smith & Wesson also had a half stop. Um, I don't know why. You don't really need it with the uh, liner lock going. And then um, you got the liner lock going there. And if you notice, that liner lock comes over all the way and entirely engages the blade. Uh, very similar to the way it did it with the uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, the build quality of the Smith & Wesson was spot on. I, I have no complaints about the build quality. It was just the design itself. It, the design itself was seriously flawed, uh, especially with the hawk bill. Now, the Colt has fixed that. Uh, it's got a really nice hollow grind uh, going on with the blade there and you notice you've got a full spine going on which means you've got a nice thick spine up here so that you could actually put this on a rope and uh, give it a whack or two and cut through the rope. Um, the hole here might cause this to bend or weaken. I'm not sure about that but uh, you definitely have a lot more strength in this spine because of the way it is and it's nice and straight. Uh, as straight as the bottom. So it's a true sheep's foot blade. But if you notice also, it's got a really nice swedge at the front there, um, which really uh, makes it easy for it to cut in at the very tip here because you don't have a real thick tip uh, at the very uh, edge of the blade up there. So really nice design on the blade. Uh, 448 stainless steel going on with that. And uh, because they've added these uh, little swirly G10 things on the handle there, it feels a lot more comfortable in the hand um, because you do have a little more uh, area out here for your hand to swell into. I do wish that they would have run the G10 the full length of this edge here, though, because this still does kind of get tiring over time as you're gripping this. 
um, you can start feeling it in your hands. If they would have run the G10 the full length, it would have been better there. I'm not sure why they did not cover the entire metal portion here with G10. I think that would make a lot more sense. And I have on many occasions thought about uh, filling in those gaps with something else just to uh, make it more comfortable, like putting it in a piece of bone on here and here and here so that it would be a full handle. Uh, another thing that they've done, uh, like I mentioned, this is a very tight um, spring, but another thing they did was uh, they've uh, fixed the problem that uh, Smith & Wesson had with the, uh, with the uh, clevis here acting as the lock on the blade. It does act as a lock on the blade, but... Um, what it does is it doesn't lock here. Well, it does, but it comes all the way down. And now you can get a better purchase on it because the clevis is actually resting against the marlin spike. And because the blade has the uh, swedge going on and everything there, you can see your hand just kind of fits in there a whole lot better. It's not uh, getting jumped way up into there. It's kind of falling right in there. And uh, you can get a much better purchase on it, especially if you get down on there and everything. And it locks in place really well. You don't have to worry as much about it. And um, let me show you how it actually locks because it's kind of interesting. If you can see here, you see that little uh, metal thing there that's turning? That's really the lock. So um, when you get the spike open, that metal thing just drops down and it engages the spring so that the spring will not move and the spike will not move. Um, and that's all it is. That's how it works. So you bring it back and the spike can move. And interesting enough, if you uh, do this, you can actually close it around and it'll be out of the way on this side. So your blade, it's out of the way of your blade if you want to do stuff with your blade and uh, not have the clevis in the way down here. Uh, and then it will still open right back up. And when it opens, it's locked. So that'll happen too, but you have to do it like that in order for it to work. And obviously also you can tie a lanyard to the uh, clevis here and uh, you know have something to pull it out of your pocket with. So all in all, I think they addressed many of the issues that you had with the uh, Smith & Wesson by adding the uh, G10 uh, handle covers over the metal scales here, uh, which gives it a little more thickness. It would have been better if they would have given it a full G10 handle, but the real difference is just getting rid of the, uh, the goofy hawkbill blade. It was a novel idea, but it was also an idea that failed. Um, now, like I mentioned, uh, uh, this is the one in the Colt lineup. Uh, the thing is, is the knife is still available. What uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works did is when they lost the, uh, the contract with Colt to use the uh, Colt trademark uh, in a line of knives, uh, they took knives that were in the Colt lineup and they moved the bulk of them over into the um, Rough Rider lineup. But... For the Marlin Spike knife, I guess because this is an outdoor kind of knife, you know, one of those uh, outdoor workman knives, uh, this one went into the Marbles Outdoorsman series. So you'll find this in the Marbles lineup at uh, uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Same exact knife, same build quality and everything else. The only difference you're going to see is instead of uh, having a Colt tang stamp on it, it's going to have a Marbles tang stamp. And uh, fortunately, they didn't bother to put the marbles uh, blade etch on there. It's just got marbles right there on the tang, and that's the only place you'll see it. So if this is a Marlin Spike knife that kind of appeals to you, um, you can still find it. You just won't find it in, under Colt. You'll find it under marbles. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out on this knife, um, because uh, it is a slight difference than what you see on the... Uh, on the uh, Smith & Wesson. I, I showed you the uh, Smith & Wesson uh, uh, Marlin Spike. If you notice, the shapes of these are slightly different. Um, 
the um, Smith & Wesson has a, a definite bend in it, and it is much sharper than what you'll find on the Colt. And matter of fact, this thing was uh, was needle sharp when I got it. I actually uh, filed the tip down a little bit because I felt it was just too sharp. The uh, the one on the Colt, and I'm assuming the one on the Marbles, is much more blunt, much more rounded, uh, which will work, uh, in my opinion, works a little bit better uh, when working with line and stuff because it is not going to... Uh, cut the line or, or cut threads so uh, you'll be able to slip it into uh, larger ropes a little bit better but uh, uh, I know the uh, tips on Marlin Spike knives are a a personal preference kind of thing so if you like one that's a lot sharper this is one that you'll have to sharpen yourself from what I understand the uh, the Marlin Spike and the blade are both 440A stainless on these Handle material, I believe, is also 440A. So uh, stainless steel throughout, with the exception of a black G10 accent uh, handle. Uh, stick around for some slides uh, comparing the two knives and also um, just talking a little bit more about the uh, specs on the, uh, the Colt, which will be the same as what you see on your uh, uh, Marbles Marlin Spike. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon. Is this thing still on? Are we still rolling? I wonder how many people actually stick around to the very bitter end of my videos, you know, listening to that, uh, Guys, say hey, thank you very much for dropping by, like, share, subscribe, and all that other stuff. Well, if you're still here, here's a little knife haiku for you. If your knife is sharp, adventure will follow you. Dull knife means dull life.